Welcome to the course on acupuncture and fascial planes. This is the introduction section and we'll also be speaking about the superficial backline in this part. Now, this is an integrative approach to understanding acupuncture and this means that we're going to be drawing from various systems including TCM, Western Research, and a number of other resources as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide in the PDF file and we see the course objectives here. So the first point reads, understand meridians and acupuncture points in the perspective of the fascial planes and their anatomy. So these fascial planes that we're going to be discussing are essentially forming an anatomical basis for the meridians and in understanding this, this can lend us great insights into how acupuncture works as well as how to make better point selections for our clients. Now the second point here reads, fascia is used in this course is referring to connective tissue in general. So there's various types of connective tissue, the fascia surrounds the muscles as well as the organs, but then we have tendons and ligaments and numerous types of connective tissues that we'll be discussing. And for simplicity, we're going to use fascia in a more general way to refer to connective tissues. The third point here reads, we're going to learn about the fascial lines as taught by Tom Myers and how they correspond to the meridians. So if you're not familiar with Tom Myers, he's a structural therapist and he's done a lot of research in anatomy and he's done dissections of cadavers and a lot of really groundbreaking work in the realm of understanding how the fascia connect various muscles to form these fascial planes. So we're going to be drawing from his work to better understand many of the point actions and functions of our traditional acupuncture points as well as some other ones. So the superficial backline includes the cranial fascia across the top of the head as well as the occipit and the small suboccipital muscles that are close to the spine, uh, rectus spinae, uh, the paraspinals and the sacral lumbar fascia are all part of this backline channel as well as the hamstrings, the gastrocnemius, and the Achilles tendon. Now here on the right side, you'll see the urinary bladder meridian, and we know that it begins in the inner eye, and it goes over the top of the head, includes the occipit and the neck, and the erector spinae muscles. It also includes the sacral lumbar fascia, and the low back, and then it passes through uh, the gluteus maximus area, and down through the hamstrings, and the gastrocnemius and into the Achilles tendon. Now we see a bit of a divergence here, though we don't typically think of the Achilles tendon as being on the bladder meridian, but it so the meridian extends to the outer ankle and little toe. Now this is different than what we think about in the fascial planes, um, but I encourage you to explore these differences between the two of them because there's actually some insights that can be gained when you explore the similarities as well as the differences between these things. And a lot of times these differences have to do with meeting points and wall connecting points and these types of things. So that's uh, something to explore a little bit as well. Okay, let's take a look at the next page that reads points and bands on the superficial backline. So as we speak about this backline, there's two major point groups or regions or bands that we want to discuss. And the first one is what I'm going to refer to as the gastrocnemius band. And that includes the area from UB40 down to UB57. Now, you can see in the image on the left that blue region is indicating this area. And then the image on the right shows the gastrocnemius muscle. Now, UB40 is quite well known in TCM for treating lumbar pain, and this corresponds with our imaging of long bones to the spine, where the more proximal part of the long bone connects to the lumbar and abdominal area, and then the more distal part of the long bone connects to the neck. So this 
can be seen in the urinary bladder meridian in the way that we traditionally think of points and their functions along this area. So UB40 is indicated for lumbar pain. And now UB57, if you're not using this for upper back pain, especially in the upper thoracic area in between the shoulder blades, this is a great point for pain in the upper thoracic area. And as we've been speaking of dalmas and groups of points, to treat upper back pain between the shoulder blades and the spine, this UB57 point is a fabulous point to use for that. But you're also going to want to add a couple other points to create a dalma. So for upper back pain, locate UB57 and then palpate a couple sun proximal and a couple sun distal and find two more other sensitive points and then do those three and it's a very effective point prescription for upper back pain. Now at UB58 something interesting happens and here the urinary bladder meridian it shifts laterally so UB58 is located seven sun above UB60 and then UB59 is three sun above UB60 and then we have UB60 between the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. And we can see on the image on the right how the soleus muscle, which is also part of the superficial back line, but lays underneath the gastrocnemius, we can start to access that muscle through this area. So I'm going to refer to the UB58 to UB60 area as the soleus band, because in those upper points, UB58 and 59, we can access that. So UB60 is a point that's commonly used in TCM style acupuncture and again it images the neck and it's indicated for pain in the neck and the back and the shoulders and it's used for headaches as well. And this point, it's a point I used to needle quite frequently when I was doing TCM but then since doing the Master Dong style acupuncture and more distal needling I don't needle this point very often anymore. But what I do is I needle the points above that in the soleus band and in the area of UB58 and UB59. And there are some of the master dung points in this region that I tend to needle rather than the traditional points because they work very effective. And essentially, they're going to have the same result as UB58 and 59. And we'll look at the details of them in one of the following slides. But what I want you to recognize now is that we've got this area where the bladder meridian shifts laterally and then these points above UB60 and then we'll return our discussion to this area when we look at the points known as the seven tigers.